This is the 1996 Ford F-350. This is the new donor truck for the ramp truck. Under there is a 7.5 liter Ford V8. It is a 460 or a big block Ford. They also put a brand new fresh rebuilt transmission behind that engine. So this drivetrain is basically the perfect fit for our ramp truck. Hey everyone, this is a pile of a 460. We are about, I don't know, I would say a quarter of the way into the swap of a 460 and ZF5 transmission swap into our 1967 ramp truck. This being a 1996 Ford F350, it features EFI and a lot of wiring, like a lot of wiring. As you can tell, we have already removed the entire front end of the truck. It is strewn about here. The truck actually came apart pretty well. Turns out corn dust is a really good corrosion inhibitor or something because we had a few of like the little body bolts and things like that break, but pretty much nothing has gotten in our way uh, too much. Uh, luckily the AC system was already drained, I guess you could say, but in reality it had been replaced with corn dust inside, uh, so we didn't even have to worry about that. But we are now at the point of getting ready to pull the entire drivetrain out of the truck to try to figure out anything that uh, needs to be changed and figure out if it's even going to fit or how it's going to fit into the other truck. Eighty. A hundred and eighty, maybe. No, it's not. Like the awkward shape makes it feel worse. Oh, we are weighing this now. That is that is every bit of one hundred and eighty pounds. I don't feel, I'm not that strong. Yeah, I'm stronger than I Yo! Oh! Oh, I feel so vindicated right now. I feel so vindicated. Did you get your arm stuck in the engine bay? Uh, pretty much. ZK said he's homing back. Why is there a grill on my... What? Why is there a Ford grill on my wall? Oh, Powers, the camera <laughs> angle you have done Perfect. to these people. <laughs> I made a choice, literally overnight. Uh, I was originally going to try myself to decode and create my own engine harness for this truck. Uh, if you come over here, the computer for this actually lives over there in the firewall. The connector next to it is a bulkhead connector that connects everything to like the dash cluster and all that stuff. There's another connector next to that that does some more of that stuff and is like safety equipment, uh, including like kill switches in there to, you know, turn off fuel pumps and things like that. And then there's two more connectors that run under the truck that go to fuel pumps and transmission stuff and, and powers its phone buzzing and all sorts of things. I really felt like it was going to be a better use of my time to send this to an expert. There is a company that literally calls themselves 460 EFI. And what do they do? They turn these harnesses and computers into standalone systems. And standalone just means that this engine can run anywhere provided you, you know, basically hook up the power wires to the right places. That's, that's all that you would need to do. Uh, in the current configuration, I would have to keep all of this, which includes, like you can see, headlight bulbs and, and horns and all this stuff that doesn't relate to the other truck at all. I have to keep all of that intact, send power to everything, and then slowly try to trim away things and, and make it run. 
and it would just end up being, I feel ugly. Like it's going to be ugly. It's going to be real hard to, to work through in the future. So uh, as we pull this engine out, I am going to package this up, send it off. And hey, as far as I could tell on the internet, nobody's ever done one of these standalone 460s on YouTube. So I can be the first. It'll be a unprofessional cones review. All right, well, the corn husk over there has released the 460 from it. Myself and Powers got that out yesterday on stream, and it uh, actually wasn't too bad. I think it took about four hours, all said and done. Uh, there was a little bit of hang up with the shifter and the firewall and stupid stuff like that, but that's how it always goes. Uh, overall, it went really well. I'm super pleased with the, uh, the ceiling hoist situation. The garage didn't fall down, so uh, a successful test for an 1,100 pound drivetrain. <laughs> I feel pretty confident using that in the future. It might be a little more kind of woody. Well, let's fiddle with the fine other benefits. Powers needs to move a smidgen to his right. Why? I don't know. Maybe he went left. Because that, oh. <laughs> yeah, that seems pretty well centered. It's going to get all the cut up and all sorts of stuff, but. I'm standing in the beam. <laughs> I almost swallowed that nut. <laughs> it's off. It's off. Leave it there. I don't want to put too much weight on the one side of this beam. Push truck. Simon Gale of Biddle for the 11 of Edwards. Jesus. Okay. CK said, boy, howdy, that is a thick ass transmission. <laughs> it's short, but it's thick. Now it's time to start cleaning this thing up and removing all of the other parts from the parts truck that I will probably use on the ramp truck just while it's in here. And then I'm actually going to use the ramp truck in its current configuration to tow this thing out of here. And then uh, I do need to start stripping down the wiring harness to send off to get converted. Uh, I got a hold of them this morning and uh, uh, seems like my kind of company. I think the company is a guy that <laughs> got uh, into the, the hobby probably of doing these harnesses and turned it into a business. And that's that's kind of the mentality of, of doing things that uh, I approve of. So let's, uh, let's see how that all goes. As far as I can tell, um, like I said, I don't think anybody has really documented one of these swaps on YouTube super well. So I am all the mostly live streaming this stuff. I figured I would uh, kind of go through some of the motions for video so that you could see how it goes. One thing that we need to consider, of course, is mounting the engine. This 460 never came in a bump side Ford. So mounts from the factory, although technically you could probably find something, mounts to do this conversion very much so exist. So I have picked up this. Thank you for your order. No, thank you. Engine mounts that will adapt to the chassis. This is the chassis side and have plates for the engine side as well. And I just uh, walked over there and made sure that this looked like it was about right. Uh, and it comes with pins with uh, uh, poly bushings. I'm not super happy about the poly bushings, but is what it is. Uh, it also comes with a plethora of hardware. And uh, I think actually the instructions, ooh, what, what, what are all of these? So many stickers. Uh, the instructions are, as I have griped about in the past, online only. But it looks like it's pretty straightforward. But I did go ahead and make sure that this part does in fact line up to the bolt holes of the engine. And that just goes in place of this pad, this rubber insulated pad that is the factory motor mount. Uh, on the chassis side of things, 
This engine sat on these adapter plates on this cross member. These trucks came with so many, many engines that there are basically just a ton of different options. For these, I ended up where we ended up taking off the passenger side one just to make the engine a little easier to get out, but the driver's side one stayed. But this is very different than how it's going to sit in the ramp truck because it's actually going to rest on this like center cradle, which will push the engine much further forward in the engine bay. No being buried in a transmission tunnel like the uh, setup here. Look at how much firewall depth there was there. There's at least a hand width of engine underneath the firewall. So this, uh, this engine's going to look very, very different in the ramp truck than it did in this one. And I'm also hoping it's gonna look a little cleaner because if you look at it right now, what a mess. Now granted, the I have the wiring harnesses all piled up on top of the thing here, but it's really, I hate to say it, a pretty ugly engine in stock configuration. And I'm hoping that with the wiring harness simplification, uh, obviously I'm going to be removing for the time being the, the AC and the power steering is going because I don't run power steering on the truck. That's going to reduce, you know, the amount of stuff that's on here. And yeah, overall, just with some cleaning and some simplification, I'm hoping that it, that it does end up looking a little better. Uh, in talking with the 460 EFI guys, the, they're recommending doing a throttle body swap on there. I just basically wanted to know if I wanted to do that. You can actually get rid of this whole like snakehead section of it and remove it and replace it with a a carburetor style throttle body so you know uh it, it, it's basically the kind of throttle body that you would see on those holly efi sniper kits but with nothing in it it only acts as throttle blades it doesn't act as fueling uh, and with that you could run a regular filter like a carburetor style filter on there uh, and, and i have personally decided not to go that route because i like the the stock looking configuration of that and for me, I, I'm not really looking for more power here. I don't need more response. I don't need any of that stuff. This thing is so significantly better than, than what it's replacing that I'm just not worried about it. And it's another $400 on top of that, which is money that could go into improving the truck in ways that would be uh, a lot more helpful, I do believe. So I am going to go with just the, the standard intake style there. Uh, but for now, I'm going to get to cleaning. This engine's really not, it's not as bad as it looks. Most of what you're seeing here, remember that this truck came from a corn mill. A lot of it isn't oil. It's just dirt and dust and cornmeal and, and that kind of stuff. It's, this is dry. Like it's not, it's not as if this engine's just caked in oil. Uh, it did have here a little bit of a valve cover leak. And I did smell that as we were going on our journey, uh, you know, on the highway for uh, 20 something or no, it was 19 hours. Um, also the exhaust manifold has cracks in it. Very, very common 460 issue that I've heard about before I even got this engine. And uh, for the time being, that's gonna be what it's like. I can replace these in the future. They should be pretty easy to get to in the new truck. I don't know if I would want to do uh, like actual headers on the thing. I've heard that these flow perfectly fine, so we might just need to do some replacements on those. That one really went. That says top only fans capable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. There's not much you can do. Ow. Straps off.
<laughs> Camera tricks, okay? Uh, what did somebody want today? They wanted, uh, I don't remember. Oh, they wanted us to be like the grease montage where they take the engine out of the car and everyone's all like singing and dancing and you've never seen Grease, have you? Oh my God. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. We have reached the point at which we are taking the FE out of the ramp truck and uh, that should be a lot easier than taking the 460 out of the F350 because uh, as far as we can tell, there's like eight things that need to be disconnected here. But uh, this will be a big step because we still at this point have no idea how this thousand pound lump of iron is going to fit in the F-250. But uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the process of taking this engine out. I'll regret saying that. Don't you dare be on the yellow plastic that's on the wall. It's freezing. What are we, about an hour off? 44 minutes, not bad, not bad. I feel like maybe on there, you're just gonna help it out. If you help me push, I think it'll just go. He says it is 844 here. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't specify the time zone. All right, so the engine is out. We got a nice open, vast space to try to put a very vast, large engine in. That was uh, not, again, as easy as we had hoped. There is quite a few things in the way, including a mid cross member that I had no idea that this truck had. And uh, that's going to pose an interesting set of problems when we go to put this engine in here, I bet, because that cross member is actually a little bit higher than the mid cross member. Let me show you. So I'm talking about the ones right there by the exhaust collectors. That is not the transmission cross member. It is also not the engine cross member that is in front of that. It is just a frame stiffener that exists right at the point where the front suspension I-beams connect that, uh, yeah, makes that gap between here and the tunnel pretty interesting. Now, when we go to mount the other engine in, these towers are going to go away. The other mounts directly bolt to this cross member. And in order to do that, we're basically going to have to, as I showed you before, put the motor mounts up on that engine and then lower that engine down into here. And it should line up with holes on these towers. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the third cross member back there for the transmission, we have shoved that back out of the way for the time being. That will likely have to be modified to fit the ZF5 transmission we're using. But there are, I mean, transmission cross members, as long as we can get something across there and put the rubber mount on there, it's fine. Not a big deal. We've definitely reached the point of this where things have gotten a little chaotic around here. This is day seven that we are beginning of progress. And we do have both engines out. We have the transmission and engine separated from the, uh, the old setup. The, uh, the FE is sitting over there on a dolly. I need to put that up on an engine stand today. Um, and today we're actually not going to do any heavy lifting work. We're not gonna try to set that engine down under there. Today's gonna be a cleanup day. I'm gonna do a little bit of work of cleaning up on the ramp truck. The engine itself, I do want to do a lot of cleaning on it because it is full of corn dust, full of, you know, just, just dirt and grime. And there's some stuff I need to pull off of there to, uh, you know, make it a little bit more simple and fit our build. Um, the MP435 will sit over there 
in the corner until somebody comes along and wants it someday or not who knows uh yeah but things are progressing the major hurdle major hurdle will be getting this engine into the engine bay getting it on the mounts and seeing how that all fits one thing i have decided is that i am actually going to remove these manifolds from the 460 when we go to mount it uh, into the engine bay there so that we have better access to the motor mount area and these log style manifolds i mean yes they have cracks in them and they're not perfect uh, but they will suit the purpose for now and they are very easy to uh, remove and install unlike those long tube headers that were on that fe those things turned out to be a royal pain in the butt getting that engine out to just you don't even want to know but uh, yeah i'm going to try and remove everything that could possibly get in our way as far as fabbing up the mounts for the engine because that's going to be a uh, a pretty stressful endeavor and i want to make that as easy as possible but magically just like that the engine's installed it was really not that bad i have to say No judging. Almo didn't tell me to plug my batteries in. Now that was next level docking. I mean, I have duct tape, I have zip ties. One way or another, this engine's getting put in. Ready? Sure. No, are we ready? No. Gonna need a new helper. <laughs> I can just add, what? Chain? Oh, uh oh, uh oh. It was this was hung up on. Hung up on the throttle body. We need a new throttle position sensor, ZK. Looking everywhere. I knew something was hung up yeah, on it. I was trying to figure out. Thank you all for sticking around through the bobbles. We appreciate it. Go clean yourself up. Here, I'll fix it. I fixed it. There. You look much better now. Dude, yep. That's not possible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it still looks dirty. Learn. But there's some things I want to go over as far as if anybody out there is looking to do a swap like this or use this motor mount kit, maybe some, uh, some things that might help you have an easier time than we did in the future. So here it is, nestled within the engine bay, and it is on motor mounts. No magic, no tricks. It is suspending its own weight. And uh, really, it fits quite nicely. I would say it almost looks small in the engine bay compared to what it was looking like out on the ground, and certainly what it looked like in the F-350 engine bay. When it comes to the more modern trucks, they push the engine much further back into the firewall, in this, it sits much further forward and overall has a lot more accessibility. There was some spatial restrictions. We'll start with that. Number one, this truck is a manual steering box truck. And that manual steering box did interfere a little bit with the dipstick here and how the dipstick mounts to the exhaust manifold. I currently have the exhaust manifolds off, but they do fit. They do actually slide onto the truck and the engine at this point. So it's not as though you can't use those acres of space over here on the passenger side. So there was only that little issue there that could be resolved with using a bolt instead of a stud or even just removing the shroud here, I think would, would probably do it. But uh, your power steering box might differ if you're doing that 
uh, on your own swap. So definitely keep in mind of that. The firewall clearance is great. The only issue there is this little throttle linkage bracket from the original engine that I will be removing anyway. But even with the chain still on there from the hoist, you can see there's plenty of tunnel room for the engine and transmission. Because keep in mind, this 460 out of a 96 F350 has a ZF5 the manual transmission on it, which is a little bit of a rarity to use as a swap. When it came to mounting the engine, I went for this kit from uh, uh, the Trans Transdapt company. They have a kit, the 9720, for installing Ford 429 to 460 into two-wheel drive 65 to 79 Ford pickups. Now that is a kit that should have all the check boxes for this truck, and it did. It did actually work out for us, but the instructions were pretty lame. There's multiple revisions of instructions out there, and they didn't include a lot of the stuff that I think would have made the process a lot easier. I think it's also worth noting, I'm using a fuel injected engine from a 96. This engine architecture goes way, way, way back, like way back to the 70s. So the block stuff is all pretty much the same. And I must say that the actual engine adapter side fits flawlessly. So if you're worried that this kit wouldn't work on a, on a modern fuel engine, not a problem. The Problem, I think, or not even really a problem, just the difference is because our truck is a 60, 67, it's pre-460, it's pre this engine architecture existing at all, there is not really holes in the cross member that these mounts adapt to perfectly. Now, I knew we were going to have to drill our own holes, but the way they make it sound is you're going to be able to bolt it down, scribe around it, and, and go from there. For at least the passenger side, we pretty much had to go on our own. Clearance-wise, the oil pan with the rear sump is perfect. Tons of room. Acres and acres of space. The motor mount on the driver's side. So, I have the chassis pad, or the, the part that connects to the truck, mounted with the open side of the pad facing forward towards the, the core support. I have the arm on the top side of the pad, and I'm trying to think of any other way to describe it to you. Uh, the angle of it is faced backwards towards the firewall. So this arm is slightly facing towards the firewall. So that's the best way I can describe to you the way that I have faced it. Interestingly, on this one, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt were in the correct location. Ish. <laughs> I didn't have to drill out these top ones a little bit as they kind of hinted you would have to But the bottom one fits perfect and the Absolute bottom one down there was a completely new hole Now the way we went about this was we mounted the entire Motor mounts to the engine you can see I still have them loose at the moment because we are not done with the mounting process, but uh, mounted everything loose and then moved the engine into place, and when it seemed like it was in the right place, and it seemed like we were lining up the holes over here, set it down, scribed around it, and, and made a mark as to where that pad was. The only ever issue we had was getting the engine angled back straight, and that was because of interference with the steering box. But once that was out of the way, this lined up really well, which is great because on the, on the passenger side, not as much to work with over here. Only this hole was vaguely close and the rest of them were all new. So this side is basically set it in place, get the engine where it's happy, and then make new holes for it. This one is nice and easy to see which way it goes because the arm is leaned back towards the firewall significantly. It is at the very top of the pad as well. So uh, the correct orientation for my application in the way that I did it, if it's correct by the manufacturer or not, who knows. Uh, but the way that it worked for me was in this exact orientation. So if you are doing something similar, that is how I did it. And it was extremely vague and not very well documented in the instructions. But as far as the quality of the parts, perfectly fine. 
I wish they were powder coated instead of painted because that, that paint on them just chips right off. Uh, so I actually used spray paint as my scribing marks or to help my scribing marks because I am certainly going to repaint those in the future because the paint's not very good on them, but they are a pretty affordable option. I wasn't thrilled about the polyurethane bushings. It's not really a performance car or, you know, a performance vehicle. So I don't really need those, but they worked well. They were easy to work with and I had no problem with that. The hardware, although it is grade eight and it is very strong, not very pleased with the fact that they didn't include washers for these. So you have the head of the bolt directly on the uh, metal pad and on the bottom, although they did include nylon locking uh, nuts, they're not flared nuts and there's no washers there either. So personally, I would have gone for washers there just for the sake of not tearing up the metal surfaces. But other than that, everything's really good. There's a really amazing part though, a part that blew my mind. For that, we need to go inside of the truck because I thought from the very beginning that the transmission mounting was going to be pretty special. Because like I said, not many people do the ZF5 in these trucks. Not many people keep the manual transmission behind the 460 at all. Um, so I, you know, it's kind of flying in the dark here. But if we look down here, within the hole in the floorboard, this is the factory hole for the floorboard, by the way. So there's a cover that goes over this. There is a transmission with a shifter there's the shifter plate there, basically in the factory location. Not just that though, the end of the transmission is in the factory location. There's the drive shaft down on the ground there. I got to get new U-joints for it and adapters because the, uh, the holes on the back of the transmission are a little bit different size, but we can definitely uh, change that out. It's the right length. I don't know how, <laughs> but it's the right length. So we're going to be able to use the original drive shaft. We're just going to press in a new, uh, a new U joint there. The actual transmission mount currently you can see is a lovely piece of dead tree. It is on the original trucks cross member. This is not the cross member out of the 96 parts truck. This is the cross member that was holding the NP 435. It will accept the two holes of the transmission with a mount, but not the mount from the original ZF5. That mount is too tall and it had the transmission sitting too high, which puts the drive shaft up into the cab and chassis of the, of the, of the truck. And overall, the, the, just the angle of it, even though we're using a two piece drive shaft and that's not super important, the angles weren't great. The engine was only sitting back like, uh, you know, it was only sitting back in the truck at about a degree. And what we want is like three degrees. So in order to do that, we're gonna to need to find a shorter transmission mount. We've got some options, we're doing some shopping, we'll figure something out there. But to have everything seeming to be pretty much at the right length and in the right spots, I'm pretty happy with that. I can actually put the tunnel cover on to see if it clears, it may not, because that's a pretty, Pretty girthy top. I'll be darned. It is pretty much perfect. I think I might even be able to use the original shift boot location. <laughs> it's just, I can't believe how well that stuff worked out. Didn't expect that at all. Won't even have to modify this. I thought I would at least have to put, you know, big pumps in this, but uh, looks like it's gonna work to me. Now that everything as far as engines out and engines in is complete, can we please take a moment to celebrate the ceiling hoist? I didn't want to celebrate too early because it still could have crashed down on us and, and squished us like a bug. But that piece of I-beam steel held strong and our new hoist that I think I named uh, Oliver <laughs> uh, held strong, worked out perfectly. Honestly, in many ways, it was easier than dealing with a cherry picker. Not having the ability to go left and right was a little bit of a nuisance, but overall, it never groaned, it never creaked, it never sagged. Everything worked flawlessly, even with 1,100 pounds of engine on it. And uh, I'm super excited about that. 
The, uh, the one thing that I'm going to give a major thumbs down <laughs> review is for the love of everything that is car parts. Don't buy one of these. This Duralast engine equalizer, the handle broke instantly. The way that the, the screw has these big nuts on the end, super annoying and they get in the way. And you can't even use an impact on it because they didn't uh, positively secure those to the screws. So the impact just spins them off. Super annoying, bad product, don't buy it. <laughs> but there we go. That is an engine in place. We got some things to do yet. As far as mounting things, the front end of the trunk is going to be a little bit questionable. I don't think we're going to be able to maintain the mechanical fan because if you look here, this is where the holes for the core support are. Uh, the core support, I've bought all new hardware for that, so we can put that back on. But look where the end of the radiator hose is. This is where the radiator would sit in the F350 versus this engine. Um, don't think it takes a rocket scientist to realize radiator ain't going to fit there. So it's very possible we won't be able to run the mechanical fan, which isn't a big deal. I run electric fans on all of my other cars, and I have no problem running them here. Not impossible, though. I even wonder if there isn't a different set of pulleys that you could run that knock it back. Since I am running just an alternator and a water pump, no power steering, no AC, cleans up this engine by a ton, by the way. Really, really does make this engine not look nearly as ugly as it was in the, in the F350. It's actually kind of attractive. I've even started to really like the, uh, the intake tower thing. The, uh, the other spatial issues are just little fiddly things that we'll have to deal with. The things we still need to hook up. So we still need to run the throttle linkage, clutch linkage, which is going to take some serious uh, engineering probably because it wants to live like in there. I'm also going to take off these inner fenders because they're almost off anyway. And I'm going to go in and clean those up, paint them up, rust proof them uh, like we did with the, the cross member down below. Wasn't much sense in doing that before we got everything in place because they just get horribly maimed. Unlike my pretty white valve covers, which is just kind of a, a visual staple of mine. <laughs> Sorry that it's probably not to everybody's taste, but it's just something I've always done. But yeah. From there, it's time to start hooking this thing up. Next time I check it with you on video, it'll probably be ready to get this thing fired up. Oh, right, right, right. I've been, hopefully, in the future, future me has thrown some of the Twitch clips into this video, but uh, here's the things that broke during installation. Chain got caught up on this throttle position sensor and snapped it. Snapped it real good. And it also caught this uh, coolant temp sensor and broke it. But new versions of those, or replacements of those on the way, and uh, not too bad. Of all the things we could have broke, those weren't too awful. All right, I think it's time to go ahead and wrap this video up for uh, part one of the 460 swap with a little bit of an update as to where we are. As you can see, the front end has started to go back on, but not just that, there are other things that uh, hasn't been shown in video just yet, such as the fact that the exhaust manifolds are both on, including this side where you can see more what I was talking about, about the spacing. Plenty of space between the actual manifold and the steering box. It was simply the stud for the dipstick mount that was uh, a little too close. Also, very importantly, those blue lines going on back there are the fuel lines. And much to the amazement of all of us, really, everybody that's uh, uh, been helping out with this project, the fuel lines and the fuel tanks out of the donor truck are now on the ramp truck. So because the donor truck used the Ford clip style of uh, fuel lines as I climb under here and see the saddle tank installed. I'm looking for, you're going for a ride y'all. Oh, there it is. The fuel filter there. Because they use these clip style lines, you couldn't really just easily modify these to have them fit. You, you really 
want to use them all in one piece. So we determined because the wheelbase of this truck and the donor truck were the same, it should be possible to use both tanks, and that is what we've done. There's still some cleaning up to do. You can see the uh, the all thread that we used for the strap mounting still running a little bit long, but uh, even the rear tank is in place. I haven't finished any of that because the rear tank actually needs to be replaced because it is super rusty. So add to the list fuel lines and fuel tanks to things that I thought there was no way would possibly fit during the swap that are now on this truck, and uh, that's just a, a huge bonus really. Now going to dual tanks and getting the tank out of the cab, it's going to be a really nice upgrade, and it should help getting this engine running in a timely manner as well. So at this point the wiring harness is on its way out to get modified. It's going to be a little while before that comes back to me. There's still a lot of things left to do as far as hooking things up and tidying up uh, and getting the truck ready to be running, not the least of which is getting that radiator into this truck because I want to use the donor truck's radiator. A lot of fabrication and stuff left to do, but like I said, I'm going to end this part of the video, well, this part of the series, I guess. I don't know what you're going to call this. I'm going to end the video here. Oh, one more thing I haven't shown in video yet. And that is that Power's got the transmission mounted using the original cross member from the truck and the original transmission mount from the NP435. Bolts right in to the ZF5. Just needed some new holes drilled into the frame here in order to uh, be in the right place, but it is good and set and ready to go. So as of this point, Powers is headed home. His job here is done, I guess, if you wanted to call it a job. Uh, huge thanks to Powers for donating his time, his effort, and endless amounts of time spent under the trucks getting the stuff down there done. Um, definitely an absolute lunatic when it comes to, uh, to getting stuff done. So major thanks to Powers for helping out with everything. And uh, it's, it's on my shoulders now to get this thing running, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for joining in if you joined in on Twitch for, I think we ended with like 65 hours of live stream in total, working on the truck over the last uh, week and a half or so, and uh, sticking around if you've been watching the video this long as well. I'll see you all next time, where hopefully we make this thing do the rumblies.